Let's start this off right. Live from the casa, the gap hop, go and get the salsa. No need for shoes, we got fishing news, interviews, and reviews. Forget the drama, we're live from the casa. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back. I hope you guys are having a blessed day. I was not going to do this, to be honest. I've got a lot of things I'm working on, and this was the last thing that I wanted to do, but I've had a lot of people remind me that we haven't been on the air on the the radio show in now 10 or 11 or 12 weeks, and I missed the last couple weeks because Mike has been down in the Keys, Jimmy's been in Facebook jail, and uh, it's just been one of those things I just haven't to be honest, I haven't been very motivated to do this. There's so much uh, going on. Who sang that for you? I actually, I paid a woman to do that. I should say happy birthday to Craig's daughter, Annika. I hope she had a great birthday. I hope you guys are doing well. We haven't seen you in two weeks. It feels like we haven't seen you in ages. Anyway, I didn't get anybody to come on the show with me this week. Um, oh, checking in from Boathouse, the greatest restaurant in the face of the earth. Uh, I don't think, I think since the last, I thought I'd tell you what I've, what's happened in my life. Also talk about maybe some of the stuff that's happened in the industry that's going on. Talk about iCast 2020 because we're not having iCast and uh, we're going to have a virtual iCast that we're just about to get, kind of sort of get rid of it. It looks like my teeth are really yellow. Look how weird my teeth look. It's this new light. Do you see what this new light does? I've got a new light and I've got a new... Ooh, damn, that thing's bright. I also have a new camera, which is uh, a lot better, a lot better. Oh, something new from Yamaha coming out. I can't wait to, to hear about that. Uh, that'll be great. Hi, Tim. Hi, Mark. Hi, everybody. Hi, Jason. Go check out Jason's web uh, YouTube page. I think the last time I, th I think I saw you, I was at the boathouse having dinner with none other than, I hate to name drop, but I had dinner with Skeet Reese and John Murray from Major League Fishing. Skeet has some great things coming out in the near future, and and I'm sure we're going to have Skeet on the show. And we're, well, if John wasn't at Chickamauga right now during this FLW Super Tournament, he would have been on here this week. But I think the last time we talked, or we did one of these, we had um, we had Major League Fishing in in our backyard here in in um, Central Florida, down here in Toho. Now, I went down a couple days. Um, I went down Sunday morning and got kind of messed up in doing things. And, well, if I'm going to keep it real, they told me they were going to launch at like 7, and they kind of launched at 6.30. And I got there at 6.32, and it kind of messed up everything for me. And I didn't get to do what I wanted to do. So I kind of went to the media room, which wasn't a media room, and I just – Really, to be honest, I just kind of made the morning of me driving around with my head cut off. That's what it turned out to be. And I was kind of pissed off, to be honest. It was it was kind of one of those things I was just like, why? what's going on here? Where's the communication? And uh, I got it all straightened out. And then I went back on Tuesday and then spent the whole morning kind of following Edwin Evers. Edwin is, hey, Lenny, Edwin is a new pro staff of Tackle Webs. And we were kind of following around. Uh, he went into Shingle Creek here in, Orla in Central Florida. And he didn't have a very good tournament, to be honest. Um, it wasn't what I don't... I don't think he had... I don't think he was prepared for it, to be honest. Uh, I think they... I know if you watch the Major League Fishing tournament during that week, I know they kept saying about how this was one of the better times to come down and fish Toho. Truth be told, I completely 100% disagree with coming down here in May to go fishing. I think it's I I think it was I think they had to do it because I think probably Kasimi paid them to come down and um and then they just it was the it's the wrong time to come down here. If you want to they caught some big big fish. Don't get me wrong. Hey Brad, Thomas has got the phone. I'll yell at him in a second. Um he takes control of it and FaceTimes himself with his friends during the day. Because I usually try not to have it if I'm working. Anyway, anyway, I thought they um, they came down at the wrong time. 
That's just my personal opinion. That's what I I'm not gonna I, I'm not gonna argue with anybody about it. I think that um, I think that it was the wrong time of the year to come. Now they did catch some stud fish, but the problem was is that the, it got it gets hot down here, and the rainstorms have a big influence on how our fishing is. And we've been until recently we've been in kind of a drought. I know there's some areas I went fishing this weekend over uh, in Lake George in Orlando and the the fish the water pond the pond was crazy high up um but here locally we still are way down in terms of wa our water level um they had hail and all sorts of other stuff uh, over the weekend too and we know we normally don't get that kind of stuff to, to again to keep it real i'm going to say that a couple times this has been a weird like three or four weeks i don't remember ever having other than when it's hurricane season getting getting tornadoes during that time but We've had some tornadoes touch down in the last couple of weeks that we normally don't get. I know they have problems up in Oklahoma and those places. Here in Florida, we don't get a lot of tornadoes, and we've had three or four in the last five or six weeks. So it's been it's been one of those weird, weird years. We're like I said, we're down in water, but uh, the fishing still seems to be really good. I know um, if you're local and you're you're out there saltwater fishing, uh, my our boy. Mike Mann is just on fire with tarpon, giant, giant tarpon. And for us, the tarpon fishing usually isn't, doesn't go off this time of year. Usually we see giant tarpon come through the lagoon in that area when the mullet run happens. And we, so in like September, August, when we start seeing the spawn of giant redfish, a migration of tarpon come in and those tarpon get from 30 to probably close to a hundred pounds. I think, I think uh, Mike had said he had a couple over a hundred pounds that he had seen recently. So our, our fishery is still doing really well. Our bass fishing has been fabulous in my opinion. I mean, I had a horrible day out on Lake George, um, but I made up for it right after it. So, you know, it's, it's either, I'd love to say it's hit or miss, but we're in a, we're in a weird time. It's, it's unbelievably hot. We had last week, we had beautiful weather where the afternoons we had 70 80 degrees 90 degrees and then yesterday the last two days it's been 102 104 so and that's kind of what our our um our summers are like we have afternoon serious showers every every afternoon and it's it's just one of those things but major league fishing came in and um you know skeet reese had won his day one and I really thought he, and he actually won his, his qualifying thing and jumped right into it. And then of course, um, someone that just won unbelievable amount of classics and, and should be thrown up there. I think it was Jordan Lee won the major league fishing here. Um, and really I start talking about, we talked about it a few weeks ago about who is the next person to come up here and be and push Kevin Van Dam and be the greatest of all time. And I didn't even think of Jordan Lee, but I really should put you, we really should be putting some, some backing behind this young man. Not really the greatest communicator because I've reached out to him many times and we used to talk back and talk back and forth every little bit, but his communication level to getting back to people to get on here is really kind of shit. Sorry. Yes, Jordan won big fish too. I think he won like two hundred thousand dollars, which is fabulous. Then uh, last week, um, we had uh, we had Jacob Wheeler win the week before, and then here we have the super tournament going on um, here for Major League Fishing. I think it was Buddy Gross won the tournament for 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 bass. And let me just say, I put out on there on the Facebook page. I wanted to know which one are you guys watching because they were kind of competing for our our viewer. Our viewership. Were you watching bass, or were you watching? Were you watching Major League Fishing? Now, overwhelmingly, and I don't know what Major League Fishing's numbers are. I can tell you that the four days that bass was on with this Lakey Fowl or wherever they were last time, they had 2.8 million people watch the podcast or the stream, and that is absolutely ridiculous. 2.8 million people watched bass. How many people watched Major League Fishing? When I put it on Facebook, it was 9 out of 10 people, I think, said they were watching the elites. 
I want to know why you would rather you prefer the elites over you prefer the bass over the elites. Is it the is it the format? Are you disappointed that the anglers went back? Uh, I went back went to major league fishing. Is there do you appreciate the new up and coming guys that you're seeing on the elites now? We're seeing a group of people that are that are just amazing. Scott Canterbury in particular. Scott Canterbury has an opportunity to win back to back angler of the year cha- championships. Now you can talk to any angler. I'm itchy and I'm sorry. Okay, hold on, hold on. Thomas, can I have my phone? Uncle Brad needs me to see it. I need my phone. Uncle Brad needs me to see the phone. Come give it to me, please. Okay, I heard, hope you heard that, Uncle Brad. He's bringing me the phone. Um, Scott Canterbury's has an opportunity to win back-to-back Angular of the Years, and that is phenomenal when you start thinking about that because, quite honestly, Scott Canterbury is one of those guys that came from FLW that moved into this, and it's just wonderful. Hold on. I'll give it to you back. Oh, really? Brad, you and I are going to have to talk on the way, but I'll call you on the way to swimming today. Um, I'll call you on the way to swimming. I, I, I heard the same exact rumor. Thomas, you can hear that. You can have this. So, yeah. Um, you know, uh, Scott Canterbury, back to Scott Canterbury. Scott Canterbury's on a, on a tear. He is consistent. And if you ever talk to any of the anglers like we do, consistently the guys constantly say i would rather win angler of the year than the classic even though the classic brings so much to them and stuff angler of the year means you're consistent and right now scott canterbury's in a league of his own scott canterbury is as consistent as anyone i've ever seen and he's really come into the elites taking them for granted and taking them by storm I didn't think it could happen, to be honest. We've always kind of, in the media and the way we we deal with people, we've always had bass elites were always kind of over FLW. No offense to the guys at FLW. Didn't mean they weren't as good of fishermen as, as everyone else, but it was because they didn't get the amount of, of respect from the media and from everyone else, and also because FLW never really had that media push. The if there's one thing that you can say about Bass, Bass does the best job at getting people to know who their anglers are. And they the the I mean Kevin Van Dam is great to start off with, but he's the best of all time. But Bass made Kevin Van Dam who Kevin Van Dam is because of the media push that they put behind him. So what what Bass can do is really amazing. Let me put some of these up. Um, even the opens just watch was good TV watching guys like Martin and Belat fighting for a spot to get on leads. Scott Martin had a horrible tournament there at central, but there's some things I'm going to talk about. Cause I got some notes. We got to talk about central. If you do missed it, some of these guys are, are trying to get into the elites. Scott Martin, Brian Lattimore. There's a bunch of guys that left FLW that didn't want to go to major league fishing. And now let me get my notes. Sorry. If you could see. I'm taking a master class on YouTube and in the things I've learned and the things I've done wrong are ridiculous, but I've got pages on pages of, of notes that I need to do better. So at the central open, we kind of knew that this was going to be the opportunity for some of these guys to have a good chance of either gaining points or having an opportunity to move into the elites because they've been fishing, majorly fishing, and maybe they're unhappy and they want to get back, but they don't have what they call the chip, the legacy chip to get back in. So some of the notables that made the Central Open, which were pretty significant, in my opinion. I'm going to read off some guys. Greg Hackney, surprise there. Jason Christie, no surprise there. I think Jason wants back. Stephen Browning, Brian Latimer, Scott Martin, Brandon Palinick, the greatest, one of the greatest of all times. Uh, used to be on the leech, James Niggemeyer. Keith Pochet. Here's another surprise to me. Jacob Prosnick. 
Gerald Swindle, and Andrew Upshaw, Trait Zaldane. If you don't know Trait, that is Chris Zaldane's wife. She's trying to get herself into the elites. That would be cool, too. And our boy that we had a couple weeks on here, Todd Castledean, was on in the thing, too. Now, not everyone did real well. Hackney got some great points because he was leading the first day. But I think there's some of those guys that are from Major League Fishing might be trying to get back into the elites. And I want to know what it is. Uh, I like Major League Fishing live. I watch both s- split screens. Nip says Major League Fishing recorded TV stints. They are more concerned about showing penalties than fishing techniques. I get sick of their one pound, one pound. And that comes from the next scene one. You're you're definitely right, Nips. There's something to be said. I think Major League Fishing moving into this two pound range that they had to do was was something that was very much needed. And I think it, it's kind of helped the platform of Major League Fishing. But my question is, I'm still questioning why some of these guys are fishing Major League Fishing and they're fishing the Opens. They don't need to fish the Opens. To be honest, Major League Fishing guys going and fishing the Opens actually helps the Brass brand. There's a lot behind that. Bass and Major League Fishing are butting heads. They don't like each other. They might say they do, but they don't because there's sponsorship money that both of them are fighting for. Not everybody can go out there and sponsor both tournaments, not to mention FLW. So they're constantly competing. And really, this year we saw a group of, of sponsors move away from Major League Fishing and go directly to Bass. We saw Gerald Swindle move over. We saw Brandon Palinick move over. So I start to when I start to see Hackney and Christie and um and Jacob Prosnick and a couple of these other people that I know are major league fishing that are now in the central opens and I know if they have time they join them but they it still helps the brand of bass. And at one point in time Boyd didn't want the guys going from bass even to the classic so i think i think we're in for another i think we're in for another great summer of all things the one thing that disappoints me about um um i'll get to that jason in a second one of the things that disappoints me about major league fishing this year and i didn't like that out of nowhere they decided to cancel a lot of the tournaments they had three or four and then that's it that's really it they're going to have one more, and I think, I don't even know that where that last one is going to be. But they were supposed to have eight or nine. And then now they've moved some of these guys are doing eight or nine by going to these super tournaments. The problem with the super tournaments, though, is that these guys that are now 52 or 53 of them are now going back and taking a step back and fishing in the FLW, which is their second group and those guys that are in the second group don't have the same opportunity to make the money that they could have because now they're facing 52 more anglers competing against them and we saw quite yesterday jacob wheeler was number one i think there were three or four in the i think maybe three in the top 10 that were major league fishing anglers i know john murray probably will do unbelievably well because the man is a stud on chickamauga john cox was doing well but having more people group into it, even though there's more money for all of them, by pu- by pu- having more people, there's more there's less people that that uh, will not get paid. So I saw an, a question from Jason, and you can go to Jason Beck Fishing, by the way. Whatever happened to the other organiz- organization that was trying to start up? They are still trying to start up. There you've had some supposed great names join them, but. Uh, the National Professional Bass Fishing League, or whatever it was called, is only going to start up next year. I haven't seen much or heard much. They made a big splash, and we had them on here. But besides that, it's been really, it's been up and down. And I would say more downs than ups. So all of the Boathouse Chefs say hi. So thank you, Dave, Dylan, Dion, and Deb. Hi to them. Thank you for all you guys do up at at the Boathouse. You guys make some of the best food on the earth. Not to mention Bob's like one of my closest friends. So if you're ever in Orlando, you got to go there. Anyway, back to tournament fishing. So we had a great great turnout for the Central Open. Um, Like I said, I'm disappointed Major League Fishing didn't try to reschedule it. I know they're saying because of COVID and other things, but Bass has made a real good decision on 
continuing and going to each stop. Now, I do think Bass is in, ter- in, in trouble for where they're going at the times. I think there's a group of Bass, uh, the people that put the tournaments together, that always... They, they want to go to a place where they can catch the biggest and the best bass. And I think as the year goes on and we get past the spawn, the fishing gets harder. And I think that the guys that are out there are going to have a, it's going to be tough fishing for them. But you want to know what? It's fishing. And that's what we need. We don't have any sports right now. People are out there fishing more than ever. I mean, when I go to Academy and I talk to my friends in the industry, my friends at Castaway, the two Castaway Rods, are having some of their best times right now because there's so many people out there fishing. Hey, Mom. So it's really a great time to get out there and go fishing and and, and introduce somebody into a fishing. I mean, this COVID thing has just been ridiculous as is. I mean, either, you know, there's just so much going on. I mean... One day it's up, one day it's down. Who knows what's going on? And I don't even want to get into it, to be honest. I don't want to get into it. So um, tournament fishing, I'm glad to see it back. We've got a lot of great things. We're trying to get to that 5,000 subscribers. It's still a long way off, but I'm slowly but surely starting to get this box for whoever is the the winner for that. And the box is going to be full of crankbaits. And I mean full of crankbaits. I have a new Plano box. You can see it right there. I'll move it backwards. It's got our stickers on it. It's got tackle web stickers on it, cooler web stickers. But I'm going to fill this box full of crankbaits. In there right now. Did I post this one? I think I did. Uh, I don't know if I posted it. This is the black label Cliff Pace. I bet you I didn't. Cliff Pace bait. There's some 13 fishing stuff. There's some six cent stuff. There's some other stuff. Custom things. There's things that I've been giving that really truthfully I can't use. But you want to know it? It'll make one hell of a box. And it's a brand new Plano box. And I appreciate the Plano people. And you get my little crankbaits on there. So that's our that's our goal for, for um, 5,000. There might be some other stuff that we throw in there too, but as of right now, that's going to be a me- that's going to be a killer giveaway to be honest, because there are going to be a lot of great stuff in there for you to uh, to do. Um, we I you want to I have extra hats. I could give you a tackle webs hat too. That's the truth. So it, it'll it'll be a cool thing. We've got lots of great things on the on the, on the planned here. We are going to. I'm going to just tell you. I'm not going to tell you exactly what's going on we are changing we are rebranding i guess um have i need have i seen the new stealth jackhammer the stealth blade i have i think you're gonna love it i love it i would go more into this jason Jason, I think you have my personal phone number. If you want to call me, I'll talk to you more. I can't talk about it too much over here. But it's awesome. It's so awesome. Anyway, um, we're going to rebrand what we're doing. Mike and I have come up with a new name, and we we are in the process of rebranding all the stuff that we have going on. So there's going to be some changes in how this works, and we've got some really amazing things coming up in the future. Some amazing things. Um, and so we're just working at it. That's what this camera is for. Normally I would use, I'll show you what my normal camera would look like. Oh, hold on. This is my normal camera. See me down there. That's that camera right there. Um, that's on my Mac, but there's some, been some ideas that we have been working on and they're finally starting to come to fruition. So we'll have um, some really great news coming up, but you'll see some different. This is gonna. There's gonna be some different looks on 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 this whole thing. Um, Mike and I have got almost all of it going on, and we've been able to talk a lot about our our the ideas, and now the ideas are coming together. So uh, you'll hear more about the the new name coming out soon, the rebranding of the YouTube channel and everything else. But also, you're gonna see the same quality hopefully you like the quality of the closer looks that we've been doing because they do take a lot of time they do take a lot of time but i'm normally four or five ahead and right now i'm not ahead at all because i've been doing other stuff and i just need to get 
get some of them done. But there's lots of great new products. Uh, right now, we're kind of in a lull of getting new products because iCast generally will be coming out next month, which reminds me, we will be doing some iCast stuff, a little bit different than what you normally would see. We're, iCast is the American Sport Fishing Association, is do, does their yearly convention, but the convention this year was canceled because of COVID. Um, of all things, that's where they do all the testing for COVID is at the convention center here in Orlando. And it's really a great time and a great experience, and it's a lot of fun. To be honest, I hate it. That's the truth. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. You run around, and you, you it's a lot of work. But you still get to see your friends, and there's dinners, and there's all sorts of stuff. It's always good to see our friends at TTI Blakemore, and we have dinner with them. And uh, I get to see Dennis Isbister, and I get to see all the friends all of the friends. So there's there's so many so many positives that outweigh the the negatives, but I really do dislike dislike it. And there's I could go into why several million times. Do you need my phone? Yeah. Nani says hello. So um they will be doing a virtual iCast this year. So we're gonna attend the virtual iCast and hope for the best. We've got some products in that are new that we're gonna be released at iCast. Um, the box is starting to get a little bit bigger. You can see this is a new one. There's the new, even though this is empty, the new hollow body frogs. Where the hell are they? We've got the new hollow body frogs from Z-Man. You can see that one right there. That's the walking. We've got the new skipping ones. You can see that one. We've got the both sizes for these. They sent those to me. We have the new Balsa Wake 1 that I've been working with. I should tell you, for everyone, no offense, not everyone gets to see my Facebook page. I apologize. There's many reasons why. But if you saw my Facebook page, um, you'll see... Yeah, there's a long ask here. You'll see or you heard about the finger going through my hook. Here is the here is the bait that did that. That balsa one from Bagley has quite possibly here's the exact bait. The sharpest hooks I've ever felt in my life. This went through my finger, literally through my finger. Um, there was blood all over this uh, because I am like, to be honest, I'm going to call myself Studley. I pulled that bitch right out of my finger. I pulled it right out. Now I had to lean on my arm and so forth, but I pulled that thing right out. So there's that. I got the new Tekel. I don't even know what they call this. The Tekel Blade Walker. You can see that. We're doing some reviews on that. And then there's a lot of frogs. A lot of frogs. Uh, so there's a lot of lot of stuff that I need to, to sit down and work. But truthfully, lately I've wanted to fish and not do other things. But we'll we'll uh, have more we'll have more stuff. So there'll be that. We have um, a video coming up where we're gonna we're gonna review four tackle boxes all from May. Um, one of them didn't show up and I should just give you a heads up. If you're ever looking to buy a subscription tackle box, as of today, which is June 24th, um, do you hear him screaming? Hold on. Do you hear him screaming? He's on Fortnite or Roblox or something. Anyway, if you're in the process of buying, um, buying a tackle box, really do your research on the tackle company. There's great organizations like Monster Bass and and Mystery Tackle Box. And now I wouldn't recommend Lucky Tackle Box because of their past, but I think they're trying to get back to it. Uh, the other one, Warrior Tackle Box, is really good. I would say uh, Rush Tackle Box has been very good. And my favorite, of course, is Florida Tackle Club. But I bought four of them. I bought Mystery, Monster, Warriors, and Real. The real tackle box people are a bunch of jerks. They are liars, scammers, and are horrible people. They lie to you constantly, and they steal your money. And you're going to see and hear my story about that in an upcoming video. I've been waiting to try to do all four at one time. 
so I could have all of the content one time. And normally I do the unboxings, I do them live on here. This is not going to be live. I've video recorded myself talking about it and tried to give ratings of the lures and try to do this thing a little bit differently. Hello, hello. Yes, real tackle is a scam, period. Let me put that up. I might leave that up. So you'll see uh, they'll be about the new products. They'll be about is the stuff overstock because that's important. Uh, there'll be a brand recognition. So you'll see my thoughts on it, and I've purchased all four of them. Well, I purchased all, I purchased all four. I've only received three. So if you're in the if you're in this or watching this, and by some chance you want to buy one of these for a friend or for someone that you know, do not buy one from Real Tackle Box. They are horrible. I would swear more, but I would get in trouble. They're horrible, horrible people, and they they flat out lie. Not to mention, they constantly try to re uh, charge your credit card after. You didn't get your first one. So there's many people who don't get their first box. And then a month later, when they would normally get their next box, they charge them again and they didn't get their first one. And then they don't get their second one. So if you're in the, if you're out there looking for one real, ta I'm giving you a, this is a foreshadowing. This is, this is nice compared to what it is. Uh, what is it called? Real you think someone's killing him back there. Real tackle box is shit. And it was 30 bucks, 34 bucks. That wouldn't if if that let me put that. If that's the case, hold on. Then that makes even more sense. But I think fishing care package is owned by the people or has some affiliation with Academy, which is not good. So don't look at real tackle box. You'll see that um in, you know here soon. I'm editing it that this today of all things. I was trying to edit. I can't. I, I'm I'm dumbfounded by this noise over here. I mean, it's, it's distracting with the comments. It's distracting hearing my son go scream bloody murder. Um, it wasn't monster. Didn't have mystery tackle box. Actually, sent me um, this box. And this box is their multi-species box. And it had... Oh, no, this is this is another box. Heck, I don't even know where the... the, the oh, I might have given... You know, I, I did give it away. I gave it to Les. Les has it. Um, yeah, my, uh, I didn't have... I The problem I had with Mystery Tackle Box is they sent me a multi-species box instead of the Elite Box. And then it took, uh, took some emails getting back. But what you're going to see in that video is I'm going to talk about customer service how how they did how, how they uh how they did um um wh wh how fast are they on, on getting back to you and and this is just my personal opinion i sent out emails to all of them and and kind of timed how long it would take for them to get back a couple of them got back monster baskets back like within the hour two hours uh mystery tackle box it took a couple days um Warriors Tackle Box is a couple more days than that. And really, the people at Real Tackle Box, they just send you lies after lies. Oh, we sent it on Friday, and we sent it this. And it doesn't, it, it's not legit. Yeah, it's not legit. Anyway, don't don't bother with them. Next week, we'll have a real show. We'll get some, some interviews in here, and we'll do some more things. We'll get Mike on here, because Mike's back from the Keys. We'll talk to him on his experience. But I just wanted to get on here and say hello, and make sure you guys knew that I was, that it wasn't, just forgetting about what we have going on, but there's just so much. And this whole rebranding has really, I got to get myself back into the, into doing this. There's, there's a bunch of stuff. So you'll hear more about the rebranding here soon, but we really do appreciate you guys watching, participating and be part of the family. Cause really like Tim and all y'all, um, and Matt and y'all, I, we really do appreciate Jason, everybody. I, I really do appreciate everybody. The whiteboard will be back to normal. There was Joe. I'm going to keep it. I said this earlier. I'm going to keep it real. I had to erase it before I got here, got going. And, and the reason was, is there was so many things on there that would spoil some of the stuff that we have coming, go, uh, coming up going, that's going to happen. And I don't want to, I don't want to tell you what's going to happen. And then it not happen. Cause then I feel like that sucks. So 
I hope you guys are out there to go fishing, that you're able to go fishing here soon. Um, I hope you're able to, you want to, whatever you do, stay safe. And in, if you're home, enjoy the time that you have with your family. I know it's a weird time, um, but, you know, it is what it is. We'll be all right. We're a strong country, and we just need to all come together and realize that we all have flaws. Nobody's perfect. That's that's what it comes down to. We all are we are not perfect. We can just live our lives the best way that we can and give praise to God. That's all we can do. So, guys, I hope that you have a great day. I hope that you have a blessed day. Um, oh yeah, nine day vacation coming soon. Good God. God bless, Craig. I hope you have a blessed day. I hope you remember to take a kid fishing and get your fish on. Wink, wink. Guys, I appreciate you all. If you ever need anything, I hope that you guys feel free to email me, and I'll try to do whatever I can to help you out as much as possible. We're a family, and we got to stay together as a group. We might have our, we might have our uh, times where we disagree with each other, but in the end, we're all anglers, and we all love to catch fish. So get your fish on. I will see you guys soon. Cheers. I got a little goosebumps saying that, by the way. Have a good day, y'all. Bye.